Um, well, Mike, uh, the results last night, out of your hands, really. Um, I suppose it doesn't really change the objective any. You've got to go into these final three games and win them all. Yeah, um, starting with Saturday. So, as always, um, next game, focus it is the biggest one. Um, obviously, it carries extra weight when we say it's the biggest one because you know, I've said that every, every game. Um, during the season, but because of the yeah the spectacle um, and what's at, at stake, and we've got limited amounts to play for, it creates that tension, and uh, I like to think that excitement as well. So it's going to be a good crowd here. Um, really looking forward to the atmosphere, um, but we've just got one thing to focus on: is today. It's making sure that we get what we need to get across. The detail we get the lads. Um, happy, enjoying things, focused, and then, uh, yeah, control the controllables. It's funny how the fixture computer can, can throw up these sorts of connotations, even way back in June when it was picking out the fixtures to, to put MK Dons and Mansfield with three weekends to go, and it would still have so much riding on it. Yes, um, and yeah, I think there's a few other big fixtures, big clashes um, that have got to go ahead, which is, again, good for the neutral, um, not so, you know, easy for the people that are really invested in it um, but for us yeah I this is why we we live and breathe football and I'm fortunate enough I feel like I've had so many highs and lows in the game uh, we just I'm just focused purely on the excitement of it um, and of course you know there is check the scores um, and you get you know a little emotional spike good and bad but you also know it's irrelevant you know, we've got to take care of our own business and then the football gods have got to shine down on us and that's out of our hands so we've just got to make sure we focus on we're the best prepared that we possibly can for a very good um, top of the table clash against Mansfield. Um, how do you keep the lid on the emotions of the players because obviously they're going to be feeling it just as much as you are you know I suppose they can sometimes be more volatile characters more characters in the dressing room who, who feel emotions more than others but how do you how do you try and keep everybody on a, on a level footing? Um, good question I think that's been a topic of conversation for, for many years. <laughs> um, we've got a variety of characters um, and this is the enjoyment of it. If everyone was the same, it'd be boring. Mm. So, um, yeah, I just think that it's put in front of everybody what we feel. They need to see, they need to hear and they need to feel. Um, but ultimately, that's uh, each their own. They've got to carry that. Um, that the authority in terms of um, responsibility to, to deal with that themselves because you know you, you can look at this as a an extended playoff um, situation as in we we don't come away with the three points on Saturday then you know the the automatic side of it seems to be the emotional side of it is there and it's it's evident and then how do you how do you uh, deal with that we win. And, you know, these are all the outcomes that we don't focus on, but they're relevant for, especially for supporters. And it's interesting, you know, you guys asking how do we deal with it? We win is a real different way and a different um, task in front of us to deal with those emotions mm. going into the next game. Because what if we, what if we won Saturday, um, and then we won against Harrogate, and then we lost on the last game of the season, and then that pipped us. You know, these. And so there's so many connotations and for me it's for the supporters, it's not for me. I'm just, I enjoy the, uh, the, the fans being in position to speculate, um, to worry, to get excited. That's the, the enjoyment of it, which I thoroughly um, i am excited for them. Um, but for us it's just pure business, we've got a job to do. The boys are fantastic, we don't really ever need to keep the feet on the ground. Um, we just have to keep directing them and supporting them um, the best we can and they'll do the business on, on Saturday. Well, I think I'll probably speak on behalf of the fans to say if, we, if, if you can avoid going through that scenario of winning the next two and then losing the final one to have it snatched away at the yeah. death, I think, I think everybody would, um, would, would shake your hand we'll and say thank, that, thanks yeah. very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, having taken on Mansfield a, a few weeks ago and it was a, it was a, crack in a, a cracker of a game, wasn't it, up at, at Field Mill and one of those games that really showed the, the quality in League Two. Yeah, it was um, a real battle the whole way through, um, and it could have gone. There's, we always talk about moments in games, and it does. It, you know, they do change the direction, the momentum um, in a game. We've just got to focus on what we can do when we start to lose grip on it, which will happen, of course. 
um, we've got to respect that and uh, know that we're going to have to suffer and go through periods and um, we're going to have to rely on um, last ditch defending and um, sometimes the frame, you know, the woodwork and things like that we have to, but we've just got to make sure that we, we focus on how we can hurt them and how we can try and nullify their threats. But when you're playing against opposition that oh, I've got so many threats and uh, got so much experience, um, you know, you know you're going to have to suffer. So for us, yeah, it was a fantastic game. Um, one that you know, we come away with a really good feeling um, and how we manufacture that going into this game will uh, be evident and for them because sometimes I think when you're on that uh, that moment where you've just been beaten by the opponent you're facing it actually you know, it creates more emphasis on um, focusing on what you need to achieve so for us yeah it was, it was a great game thoroughly enjoyable um, and we hope for a similar one on Saturday. Um, how's everybody doing fitness wise we spoke last week about Matt Dennison and Joe Tomlinson how they're getting on? Yeah Matt he's working hard um, yeah he's had a, a fresh haircut to uh, to get his head down and to uh, do what he can, which is good. Um, he seems good spirits. Joey um, is um, good, uh, but we've just got to make sure that we, um, it's a difficult one, I haven't really got too much to, to um, shed light on that because um, it's one of them where it could be a couple of days and it could be a couple of weeks. We've just got to monitor and be as, as cautious as we possibly can be. Um, but yeah, they're, they're both in good places and we're both re we're hopeful that they'll both be um, playing a big part in the, in the up and coming games. And Jack came through 70 minutes on, on Saturday, no, no signs of any, anything recurring from him though? No, absolutely fine. Um, he's trained uh, as normal. So again, he's still, he's had a, a good chunk of time out. Um, but yeah, he's uh, all good and recovered and, and uh, having a good, good week's training. Uh, a player of the month nomination for Alex Gilby, um, three goals and four assists in, in seven games in March. He's been massive for you, hasn't he? Throughout the season, but but last month in particular, I think he, he stood out and puffed his chest out. Yes, he certainly did, and I think it's been very rare that his name hasn't been mentioned in these <laughs> these chats. Um, and f yeah, for for good reason. Um, he's been fantastic for us. He's mentioned his leader on and off the pitch, um, but his contributions have been huge for us and um, a massive part of why we're have got an exciting end to the season. Um, a player that we don't, I don't think we've really spoken about and not really seen an awful lot of recently, um, but this year at all, I don't think. Um, Anthony Stewart, um, still in and around the fold. I've seen him come into to training this, this morning. What's, what's the situation with him? Where's, where's he at? And, and you know, how's he feeling you know, mentally as he's not, not in, in squads? Um, I mean, that's something that you'd have to speak to him about um, because you get a lot of players that will just show up and do the work. Um, and put on a face and um, uh, and yeah sometimes he is in a real difficult position and situation um, so deep down I possibly uh, you know haven't got that clear understanding but everything he's done on face value has been fantastic um, the way he's conducted himself so if you just ask me I'd say he's in very good spirits I say he comes in every day with a smile um, he contributes to the group where he can um, and he just shows you the experience he's got um, and the, the knowledge he's got, the understanding he's got of uh, football and careers in terms of whatever you can contribute. It's uh, worth his own while, but also collectively, um, even when you're not playing a, a big part on the field and on the pitch, you can still have a real effect and influence behind the scenes. And that's something, you know, for me, that's the strength of character and that will determine the level you play at overall um, and you can just see it with him so uh, he's he's in a difficult situation but he's been brilliant for for us um, and finally um, I, th I think we've mentioned it quite a lot in in the last few weeks but I suppose it's worth repeating that you know when you took over the club were struggling at the wrong end of the the table um, and now to be in a position where playoffs are pretty much secured it would take you know mathematical wizardry for for, it, for you to fall out of that top seven now but the fact that the club has managed to come so far is a feat in itself, isn't it, in, in these last few months since, since you took over? Um, I don't know, is it? <laughs> I, I certainly think so. At, at the time, you know, you took over in, in 17th place. And yeah. I think the thought of the playoffs then were, were 
pie in the sky almost. Yeah, I think there's two ways of looking at this, um, which yeah, really interests me. The understanding that the, the, what we're trying to build, um, what we're trying to create, um, the the process. Um, I think we've made huge strides, um, and from since we've come in of what um, we're trying to uh, create the culture and the environment I think has been fantastic I think uh, there's been a lot of hard work done off the field um, and for me that's not saying that there was that wasn't going on beforehand because I know there was I know the the, the people that were working here so it would be a relentless pursuit um, but in terms of history if we come up short it's meant nothing. So, and so yeah, we've the boys have been brilliant. They've been, um, they've been had some incredible uh, games and give everything, left everything out there. Um, even off the back of the, all the defeats we've had, they've reacted, they've responded brilliantly. Um, but if we come up short, then this is just another season wiped off, and everyone's focused on the other one. So, in terms of the product and the, the culture, the environment, yeah, huge. It's been brilliant. It's thoroughly really enjoyable to work with these guys. Um, and I do feel like we're really improving and we're getting somewhere. But ultimately, the next three games will prove whether it has been, um, you know, how, how big it's been the change um, and what the, the history books say. But for us, yeah, it's uh, off the field. It's been, it's been really enjoyable and exciting to just be in this situation now, to have such a game on Saturday that we're looking forward to it and we want to get our teeth into um, and everything else will look care, take care of itself.